I've had uh, questions come up a lot about evangelistic dating. And I don't believe evangelistic dating is a good idea. And what that is, is dating someone in hopes that you can win them over to the Lord. I think it's a bad idea. And I think a good illustration of what could happen in this situation is King Solomon. In 1 Kings 11, 1 through 2, it says, But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. So if you date someone who isn't saved, you could end up getting attached to them and cleave to them in love. You see, Solomon began to love all these strange women from all over who did not know the God of his fathers, did not care about the God of his fathers. They were into all types of evil things, idolatry, uh, making their son or daughter pass through the fire, things like that. Solomon ended up doing it himself. So the first reason I would not recommend dating someone who is an unbeliever is they could cause your heart to turn to something else. And even as a saved, born-again Bible believer, it can be hard to keep your heart to where it needs to be. And hopefully as a saved person, you have turned from your idols and are trying to put God first in your life. And Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 1, 9, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. You don't turn, for, uh, you don't automatically turn from every single idol in your life when you get saved. Uh, you still may have tons of idols in your life. But hopefully as a saved person, you are getting rid of those, trying your best to get rid of your idols. But if you're dating a lost person, they most likely have tons of idols and not even trying to get rid of them. And if you're dating a lost person in hopes of winning them to the Lord, there will be a heavy push to turn back to any idols that you've already gotten rid of. And the Christian life uh, is all about uh, growing, a consistent progression you want to be constantly growing in the Lord, growing in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You're never going to be perfect. You're never um, going to be just to a point where you don't need to grow anymore. And having dating a lost person, it can stunt your growth. And Solomon's heart was turned after other gods. Your judgment can be clouded by the love you have for the person that you're in this relationship with. And the old saying is, <clears throat> do not date anyone that you wouldn't consider marrying. I think that's a good thing to go by because you can really fall for this person and then want to get married and then you're just in it for the long haul. And Exodus thirty four sixteen says, And now take of their daughters unto thy sons and their daughters go a-whoring after their gods and make thy sons go a-whoring after their gods. You marry a, a lost person, most likely you're going to go after their gods. It's a lot easier for them, for you to end up going after their gods than it is for them to go after your God. So the first reason is they cause your heart to turn to something else. The next reason is it's hard to be in agreement. And as a married couple, it can be hard to come to agreements anyways. And what you have in a relationship of a lost person and a saved person are two different goals in life. That is, if a saved person is trying to do the will of God, they're gonna, you're going to have a two completely different goals. Sometimes in relationships, it can be hard to be in agreement even between two saved people. And Amos 3.3 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? You see, a lost person will have a different mindset than a saved Bible believer. They'll have different morals, different hobbies, different outlook on life. A Bible believer will try to live his life according to the Bible and filter everything through that, while a lost person will live according to their own feelings, according to what's ever right in their own eyes, what the world thinks, what the world's saying, and they filter everything that they 
do through the world and their own understanding of what uh, good and evil is. They don't filter it through the Bible where you get the absolute standard truth and of what good and evil really is. So it's, uh, it's not a good idea to date someone who's lost as a saved person because it's hard to be in agreement. The next thing is you, got, you have to conform to the world. In Romans 12, 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And whether you think it will happen or not, you will have to eventually conform in some way to stay in the relationship and to keep peace in the relationship. And since you are in love with the person, you won't want to lose them, and you'll do what it takes to make them happy. And think about the situation with Adam and Eve, the first relationship in the Bible. 1 Timothy 2, 13 through 14 says, For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. You see, Adam knew he wasn't supposed to eat the fruit. He wasn't deceived. He did it because Eve did it. He loved Eve enough to die for her, so he did. You can get to a point in that relationship to where you love the, the person more than God, so you'll do what they do, even if it's the wrong thing to do, because you love that person so much, and that person actually becomes your idol. You see, in a, a good, healthy relationship between two saved people, they would both have God first, and they would never desire for you to put them before God in the ideal, godly relationship. And I know that's few and far between, but that's the way it should be, and that's something you're definitely... That's hard to have between two saved people, let alone between a saved person and a lost person. And I'm uh, this. I'm speaking generally, as you know, as you know, there are exceptions, obviously, to these things. But the exception doesn't overthrow the rule. The next thing is dating a lost person is a grief of mind to your loved ones. In Genesis 26, 34 through 35, it says, And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Beshemeth, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah, his parents. And uh, Esau does this on purpose at times to just get back at his parents. He goes and marries somebody that's, that knows not the God of, of Abraham and Isaac. And many times people do that. They'll go and, and be with somebody just to get back at their parents, and it's a grief of mind to your loved ones. Many times someone can get in a really bad relationship with a boyfriend or girlfriend, and it's just a grief of mind to their parents. It puts their parents in a constant state of, of worry. I don't think that's honoring your father and mother. And it can just it's hard on everybody around them. Many times you think decisions only affect you, but they also affect everyone else. Consider how many times a saved person can get in a relationship with a lost person. They eventually get married. They have children, and it's troublesome for the children. They have one parent pulling them one way, the other parent pulling them the other way. And you say, well, I'm not going to get married to this person, but there's a good chance that you will. You're going to get attached to the person, and you won't want to let go of that person. And it's a disastrous idea to begin a relationship with a professing Christian who doesn't act like a professing Christian. There's a whole bunch of professing Christians who act just like a lost person. So being with that person is almost like being in a relationship with a lost person. And Paul said himself in 1 Corinthians 5.11, But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, which such and one know not to eat. You see, Paul warns about how bad it would be just to keep company with a brother, another saved person who's involved in such a sinful lifestyle. And it would be even worse to get in a close relationship with someone who isn't trying to live by the Scriptures. And Abraham knew that Isaac would need a bride from his kindred and not from among the Canaanites who were all into really bad stuff. So he sends his servant to go to his country to get a bride for his son. In Genesis 24, 3 through 4, he says, And I will make thee swear by the Lord 
the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell, but thou shalt go into my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. You see, he knew that if he got a, a, a wife of the Canaanites, it would just be a grief of mind. It would ruin everything. Maybe you are already married to an unbeliever. You should stay with them. If you're already married, you, you need to stay with them. It says in 1 Corinthians 7, 13, And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. And you can try your best to win them over by always living it in front of them, being a light in front of them. It says in 1 Peter 3, 1 through 2, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, so that while they see the way you live your life, it can turn them to the Lord. <clears throat> so, if you're already in that relationship, as uh, been married, you know, you need to stay married. But I wouldn't go seek out lost people. I wouldn't do the evangelistic dating thing. I wouldn't seek out lost people to be in a relationship with them. Seek them out to get them saved. And if you can't get them saved, I wouldn't go beyond that in forming big relationships, especially not dating them. I, I just think that's the wisest decision to do. And uh, maybe people are discouraged because... There's not many to choose from nowadays. But it would be better to just be alone than to be with somebody that's just going to torture you in your mind for the rest of your life. And if you just wait, you'll eventually find somebody. So it's better to wait and then be happy than to not wait and not be happy. And you uh, are actually, if you're single... You're in a situation where you are have a really good opportunity to get close to God, to learn the Bible, where you have tons of time to uh, learn learn the Bible, get close to God. Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 7 how p people that are single have much more time for the things of the Lord than somebody who's in a relationship with somebody, especially somebody that's married. So use this time to get in the Bible. And if you think about it, you're in a situation that probably 90% of married people would like to be back in. You see, most married people, they can't stand their husband or wife half the time. And half the time they're wishing they were single again or didn't even get married in the first place. You see, uh, you, uh, you always think grass is greener on the other side. And of course, if you're a saved Bible believer, you would love to have a, a godly husband or wife. And Paul says it's better to marry than to burn. So you, you need to be looking for a wife, but at the same time, use this opportunity that you have because this opportunity is going to be gone probably soon. You're going to find somebody, you're going to get married. So use this time where you have all this time to learn the Bible, get close to God, because right now you probably have more time than you're ever going to have. You're going to get married, you're going to have kids, and then that takes away even more time. So just... Uh, be content with such things as you have. Uh, live godly today. Don't worry so much about tomorrow. Be consistently looking for somebody. Uh, but don't be in too big of a rush to where you're going to make a bad decision and uh, date a lost person just because you want to have a girlfriend or get married. 